win song espoir. I was the underbidder at twenty nine thousand. I should have bought him for thirty. <laughs> I would say the biggest one that got away for me was a mare called Leah Elmhurst. Uh, myself and Jack Darling were the underbidders on her. Uh, she ended up making well over a million, and then ended up being a great broodmare uh, after that. When I was first getting started, I probably didn't have enough confidence in myself. So my owner, I was supposed to be there picking out a Jay Lobel, and I kept going back to this panorama colt. Um, I probably should have bought him because it turned out to be uh, staying together. Years ago, my wife wanted me to buy an Albert Albert filly called um, Double Creme, and I think she sold for like three thousand dollars. And well, the rest is history. <laughs> she went and made a lot of money, and she's been a good broodmare. So. Uh, I still hear about that one, so <laughs> I'd have to say double cram. I would have to say, um, from what I remember, the few years that I've been going to the sales with my dad now, we uh, really, really, really liked um, Tailspinner, a horse that Blair Jean's had, and uh, it just sold a little out of our range, and I think uh, looking back at how well it turned out, it uh, would have been nice to have in our barn. And also, we had the first two, first two horses out of the Sun Beach Somewhere family, uh, and we weren't able to see Sun Beach because we didn't go to the sale that year. So I think if we were there, we would have liked to take a look at him, and I would have rather seen him in our bar than Brent's, but Brent did one hell of a job with him, that's for sure. Um, I have an owner that reminds me uh, from time to time that sports writer was on our short list and we bought a horse called He's a Demon for 180000 uh, about 20 head earlier I think at Harrisburg and it was near the end of the session and we decided that we'd find a pacing colt the next day and uh, we went for dinner and celebrated our big purchase and uh, it turns out we bought a different arts place colt for 50000 that turned out to be about a 4000 claimer. So uh, that's one we maybe should have took a bigger look at. Well, Odie's fame, I looked at her. That's probably the one that uh, sold for next to nothing. That uh, I, I didn't mind. She was kind of, of a mean mare, but she, was, she, she went on to make good money. The big one that got away. I would say there was two horses last year that I really liked, that I was the underbidder on one and I didn't bid on the other, that I thought were really meant to be you know, horses that should have been bought. One was Captive Audience. I was the underbidder on him, and uh, the other one was a horse called Sir Richard Zetam that Mike Lachance and Pat Lachance have this year. Those were two horses. Uh, Mike, uh, Sir Richard Zetam had the same maternal pedigree and this bred the same way as Captain Treacherous. So I said, here's Captain Treacherous at, at less of a price. And they ended up buying the Colt for $35,000, and he's had a tremendous year. And Captive Audience was out of a mare that I trained, Captiva Island. And I thought, here's a Colt that should be bought. And we were the underbidders on him, and he's turned out to be a nice Colt for Colin Johnson. The, the one that I can remember the most is Chocolatier. Um, we weren't re real serious on him. Um, but I think we ended up being the underbidder at forty some thousand. He went for fifty. And who's who's we? Um, Jean, Mrs. Wellwood, Jean Wellwood, and myself were both at the sale that day. And we'd already had a horse, and we weren't real, you know, struck on. We we liked the horse, but um, he was going to have to be right in our price range to get him. But we ended up being the underbidder. She was a Jate Lobel mare. Her name was Express Gate. I told an owner he was looking for a filly in Lexington. I told him to buy this filly. It was the first crop of Jate Lobels. I said she's a great filly, great family. And he ended up buying uh, another filly by log. Express Gate went on to win four or five hundred thousand dollars. And she's a broodmare at Hanover Shoe Farms. And the log filly ended up being a fifteen claimer. You know, so. Uh, it's, it's tough, you know, there's a lot of horses that uh, I've lot to buy, but that's one that really sticks out in my mind, and uh, the guy, at, uh, if he sees this, he'll, he still remembers it also. So Probably uh, my brother and I were underbidders on Matt Scooter, so like that was probably, that was a long time ago, but he ended up going to Mr. Opal, who's an owner of mine now, but uh, we often think about that, you know, we just thought we couldn't bid against him, so we just uh, stopped. Well, we know that he wasn't really that interested either. <laughs> I'd like to bought some beach somewhere. Were you there? I was there, but uh, uh, I, I thought they give. Uh, I thought they. I thought they give what he was worth that day. He was a good-looking horse, so they, they give uh, 
exactly what he's worth, I thought. Ended up he was a pretty cheap horse. Yeah, there's a few. I had, uh, we trained the mother of independent Lassie. We trained her and I raised her as a two and three year old, Mr. Herbie's her foil. So I probably, I said the other day, I don't know why I didn't try to buy that one. Because <laughs> I loved her. Well, I wasn't really the underbidder, but uh, my brother and I went to Lexington to find a nice trotter. And the girls at Springhaven Farm said, hey Tom, I want to show you a nice pacer and you should buy this pacer because you're from Ontario and they pulled this most beautiful pacer you've ever seen out of the stall and I looked at him and I said, John, we should buy this horse. And he says, no, we're here to buy a trotter. And I said, well, I think we're missing a good one here. It was some beach somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can say, well, on my budget, we really didn't have a whole lot that got away because we didn't have enough money to chase it far enough, but my wife might like this one, though, as we went to Orangeville one day to claim a horse, and when I got there, I didn't like it, so I wasn't going to put the claim in, and then she picked one out in a later race, and uh, I said, no, 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 we're not claiming that thing. That's, you know, that's a glorified buggy horse, so, but... My wife's name's Kelly, and the horse's name was Kelly Nelly. I was going back a long time ago, but she went out of the five claimers in Orangeville and raced here on the jockey club for about five years in the mayor's open. Oh, she's gone. Sold for like 180000 mm -hmm. something like that. And Chris Storms was willing to put up 100 for half, and I couldn't find another client to go to 200 on her. But uh, she was, to me, she was just... She was what I would call, you have in your mind what a, a horse is perfect to you. And everybody has a different idea. It's like some guys like blondes and some like redheads and, and tall, short. But that was a perfect filly as far as I was concerned, in my eyes. Mark Stacy liked her. He wasn't crazy about her. And he's... he's great horses but that wasn't in his eyes wasn't the, his kind of girl I bought his brother the year before son lamb and he was good to me uh, but the next year I went back and I was in he sold at Tattersall's he was uh, uh, I can't remember who consigned him whether it was uh, Stoner Creek or not because I bought when I bought son lamb I bought him from Stoner Creek but anyways uh, uh, I was one of them times I was I'd already bought what I wanted and uh, Ben Wallace come right beside me when they put the horse in the ring and he said Burns you look at this colt I said yeah a couple of times so what do you think I said he's great I said he's not very fancy but I said everything's there and Ben threw a couple of bids in on him and Seth Rosenfeld bought him for twenty two or twenty three thousand but if somebody point is at a sale the point is, like I said, if somebody had walked up beside me and said, "Hey, Bernsey, do you like that?" Boy? I'll take half. I don't, but I had nobody at that time, you know, and I'm not much for going out on the limb all alone, you know. I'll take somebody with me, but not myself. <laughs>